So good evening, everyone. I want to thank you all for being here today. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you doing that so much. You, you have no idea how much Rick and I and Ed and, and um, um, Steve appreciate you guys and um, how you continuously show up to these events. We truly appreciate it. And because of that, I don't want to waste any of your time. So let's just kind of dig right in and let's talk about uh, position trading. So one of the first questions that already popped in here was, how do you define position trading? Well, there's actually, you know, several different methods of trading out there. Um, and position trading happens to be one of the most profitable ways of trading um and and the thing is most people don't know that in fact there was a study and I, I wish i could find that study again i've looked and looked and looked for this study um but there was a study that talked about um the benefits of position trading and position trading is we're looking for trades that last a little bit longer than the standard swing trade trades that can go actually weeks and even into months if the trade is really trending and doing very well. And position trades can be very, very profitable. And for those of you, is there anyone here that's still working full time? That's out there, can't really pay attention to the market during the, the day very much, working full time um, and uh, struggling, struggling here. Um, position trading may be something that you wanna look into because it was really with the position trading idea that I built my account and it requires a little bit of discipline. Well, no, it requires a lot of discipline. It requires you stepping away from the micromanagement of trades and just allowing a trend to continue to work. But it's taking just that one step. We're going from, you know, day trading. Day trading is, we all know, very difficult. Um, most day traders lose money for a long period of time before they start to make money. And um, it's a very challenging way of trading because there's we know the volatility of the market. There's lots of noise in the market. Those kind of things requires, you know, um, usually quite a few computer screens requires a lot of time. It requires you to be laser focused while you're sitting in front, sitting in front of your computer, making those trades. You cannot be distracted. Swing trading, as we know, doesn't take quite as much time. We're able to do that in just a little bit more of a part-time format. It's really hard to do any swing trading right now with the volatility. And it doesn't require quite as much focus to the trading as, as day trading does with the really quick decision making that you have to do in day trading. And then there's position trading. Position trading is where we're looking for those longer term trends. It, it requires um, not a lot of attention, really. I was able to successfully um, position trade um, when I was working full time, and I would commit about an hour a day to my trading and then several hours on the weekend to my trading where I was picking up education, doing some sorting and scanning and, and uh, building of watch lists. But it doesn't take as much time and it can be more of a comfortable way of trading. It can be very mechanically managed. Okay. And I'll show you some charts and, and some things on, on how that how that works and how we can uh, maybe use some of our current knowledge because it's the it's the patterns that are they're exactly the same. If you guys noticed, uh, I'm just going to jump right to a chart. If you guys noticed today um, toward, uh, you know, mid-afternoon, I was posting setups for a lot of hourly charts. And the reason is because we have such a volatile market, the, those shorter term trades have been very, very handy, just really quick in and out type trades to deal with this wild volatility. So why in the world would I want to talk about position trades when we're having this kind of wild volatility in the market? And the reason is a market pullback is the perfect time to be thinking about some of those kind of trades. 
because this will end. I don't know when, I don't know how soon it will be over, but this will end and good stocks will be at bargain prices. And so we'll have an opportunity to jump into trades and maybe hold them a longer period of time. You know, a good example of that is I'm going to go to um, our T-line chart here with the moving averages. And you can see this is set on a weekly. And, and I want you to see how on a weekly chart, you could have easily position traded the diamonds and stayed with that trade. If I were to turn on, use this chart on a weekly and show the volatility stop, you can see that the trading patterns are identical here and how you can easily have stayed with the trade even in the index charts. When you take that little bit longer approach and work a little bit less to micromanage and allow a trade to work. Let's take a look at, you guys have seen me post this forever because this is just one of those beautiful charts that makes you want to cry. Microsoft. Can anyone see how you could have picked up Microsoft and held that trade for a long, long time? And if you think that is impossible, if you think that's impossible, I want to show you some past trades of mine to give you an idea that I actually do follow this stuff from time to time when the market sets up for it. So for example, here's Disney. Let's take a look at Disney. Now you can see for a long time here, for several years now, Disney has been trapped in this ugly, nasty volatility, really ugly pattern. I want you to notice it's got higher lows though. Okay. Would anyone see this as a potentially a big giant wedge pattern? Now it's been stuck in that pattern since, well, 2015. So where's this trade I was, you're talking about? I'm going to go to a different drawing board because I have it marked. Right here was an entry into a trade on Disney and that trade lasted four years. So that's certainly possible to do. I can show you trades in um, lots of different stocks where I held those positions for a long period of time. Now that doesn't mean I held the entire position for a long period of time. It doesn't even mean that I didn't buy in and, or sell and buy back in at different points in time because I do. You guys know, and I, I was very public on this, when I said I was buying Walmart and I know Rick is also holding Walmart. If I go back to uh, this chart right here, I can show you exactly where I entered Walmart. Right on that candle, that big candle. And I am still holding Walmart. Okay. Now, some of these have been stock, Jim. Some of them are leaps, leap options. Okay. Some of them are leap options. And so we can talk about that and how we might go about finding these trades. Uh, Gwen, yeah, most of the time when I make a position trade, I'm going to manage a position trade with a weekly chart. But that doesn't mean you have to, okay? You know, if you take a two-day chart or whatever, you might find that be the perfect method of managing that longer-term trade, okay? And I would even say, why couldn't you change that and let's go to a hike and ashy? If we're looking for that long term and that long term trend, can we use Hike and Ashy to do that? Well, absolutely. You can see with this Hike and Ashy, there is an absolutely dead solid perfect enter entry into this trade. And that trade went from April 
clear through to June. There is another absolutely perfect entry out of the pop out of the box pattern right here in Walmart to enter here. And I want you to notice that that trade went from April, excuse me, from October through February. Okay. Did I sell my stock here? No, I did not. I stayed in the trade. But what I've been doing um, when this was going on, I sold covered calls against the trade. And by the way, I trade options around this. This was a stock position. I've traded options around this position consistently in this trade. Okay, so I'm up really big on this position. Okay, now the Heiken Ashi, as you can see, the Heiken Ashi, uh, let me shut off all of these lines and let me shut off the volatility stop here just for a second and what i want you to see in this is is um with the hike and ashy candle notice that there's no tails on these candles except this one right here we had some volatility right on that candle the hike and ashy candle shows us strong trends it shows us transition points where we have wicks and tails and little tiny candles. These are transition points. Okay, we just have to wait for the entries. Okay, the same thing is true in a downtrend. You could have easily gotten into this longer term downtrend move. And you can see there's no wicks on those candles indicating nice strong downtrend. Okay, so you could trade this long or short in that same method. Now, do you have to use a weekly chart to do this? No, what if I used a, um, what if I used a, a two day chart? Can this work in a two day chart? Well, here's a trade that you can see kicked off here in October, mid October, it's the same trade. And you can see right here toward February is when everything fell apart. Doesn't have to be a weekly chart. Okay, so what we're looking for when we're looking for those longer term trades is we're looking for those nice, comfortable patterns that show themselves in charts all the time. And by the way, I'm showing you hike and ashy here, but it doesn't have to be hike and ashy. It's just hike and ashy really smooths out that pattern considerably, pulls all the gaps out of, out of the trade and helps you stick with a position a little bit longer. So you can choose to find these any way you want to, but they're all over the place in the market. They're absolutely all over the place in the market. And when we get a market pullback, I actually get excited about the opportunity that I can jump into some of these longer term trades. Okay, where I can catch those stocks recovering after a long sell-off and be able to position myself not for any and not trying to make any um, be heroic even in the trade i'm only looking for a reversion to the mean i'm not talking about this thing just climbing to the moon and just making a gazillion dollars i'm looking for a reversion to the mean okay does that make sense so today, in Right Way Options, I brought up the idea of LVS to everyone, and we were looking at this with the idea of a longer term trade. I'm going to go back over here to my naked chart, and you can see there's the downtrend on the chart, and we've broken that downtrend, and we are now holding this bottoming pattern. We see a double bottom in here. There's our double bottom we see the possibility of a rising trend and a stock trying to correct this long-term downtrend. 
a reversion to the mean it's a mathematical t term um reversion to the mean means everything tries to come or create go back to an equilibrium point right if we look at, at a big long run in in a trade the pullback is that is that attempt to revert back to the mean okay it's 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 that um it's that ebb and flow that happens in everything okay so, for example, would anyone think that it would be even heroic to maybe bring LVS is to have it recover up into here around 70? Does that look like impossible to do? If it builds this bottom in here and starts to work its way up, would that be impossible to do? Now, before you answer that, I want you to realize that there's stocks that are doing this all the time. Okay. Let's take a look at, um, well, let's use these moving averages here. Okay, on LVS. That's a weekly, we want the daily. And we can see that the daily is setting up for a rounded bottom breakout. So up here towards 70 that I had marked out, that's just returning or a re reversion to the mean. That's basically just a little bit more than halfway in this of this downtrend being recovered. So I'm not trying to hit one out of the park or do anything fancy here. What I want to do is be able to pick up a trade in here and give this the opportunity to move up into this area. Now, I laid this out, a potential trade idea for right-way options folks today that was going to cost in an option, it was going to cost about seven, a little over $7 a share, okay? And in two months, if it rallied up into here, giving it at least two months, that $7 a share trade would be worth something around $17 a share using an option. Anybody like that? Can anybody risk $700 on a single contract for the potential of that kind of return in a trade? And it's a trade that you don't have to manage every single hour of the day. All we have to see is the stock continue in its trend, continue to move up. That's all we need to see it do. It can bounce around in here. It can move all over the place. Doesn't really matter. We're looking for the big return on that position scale up in here. Okay. Now, what if it doesn't do all of that? What if it doesn't come all the way up here? What if it only goes halfway? Would you guys mind making the profit on that? And see, the fun thing about position trading is it doesn't take much time. You don't have to spend a lot of time with your position trades. And most folks that trade stocks and options are underinvested most of the time. How many of you would say that you usually have a great big pile of cash sitting in your account? That doesn't get used. Okay, and so what I like to do is I like to use a portion of my account for some of those longer term trades. Now I'm not talking about a ton of them, but I'm not talking about building a giant portfolio of just those. Maybe look for somewhere around three to five trades that you can pick up over a period of time that you're hoping have the opportunity to go several weeks or several months. 
and only use a percentage of your account that you feel comfortable with. Okay? So if you follow the rules that I like to follow, no more than about 3% of my account into any one trade, if I'm really confident in the trade, maybe up around 4% of the account, can you guys commit three trades at 3 or 4% of your account? Keep them small and work for that longer term return here. Now, why do you want to do that? Why, why, why would you want to do that? A lot of people think that the quick trading, the swing trading is the most profitable. Well, it can be if you're right on, right? How many times are you guys exactly right on timing and direction? We work at that every day in swing trading right and we're not always exactly right on timing and direction because of the noise and the junk that's going on in the market is it very hard to see trends like this do you guys think you could have if you'd have entered a position in here on microsoft you could have stuck with that trade would it have been that hard to have stuck with that trade would have been pretty easy right and notice that the patterns are identical. I'm not looking at anything odd. I'm not changing up anything. There's my downtrend. We break that downtrend. I always require that the stock break through. Either pull back or consolidate to hold. Prove it can hold. And then buyer step in there. It works with the volatility stop. Okay. It's the exact same trade, the exact same pattern that we look for in virtually every trade. We just have to remove that whole idea of micromanaging that position like we do a swing trading and allow that trade to work itself up. Now, will they all be as smooth as this? No, of course not. They're not all going to be as smooth as that. But let's take a look at some others. Um, how about SQ? Did this perform in exactly the same way? Yeah, built this bottoming pattern in here. You could have picked up this consolidation on the break through the 50 right in here. Nice little consolidation. Or you could have waited and say, I want to see this break above this high right here and see the entry pattern right here. That's the eight exponential moving average, Bob. That's the ADMA on a weekly. Uh, yes, Kimberly, you know, I will always manage with a stop loss. But here's the fun thing in a position trade. After you start building a profit in the, the position, you can relax your stop loss a little bit. You don't have to be so right on. Let the chart move around a little bit. Remember, we're after the big game. We're after the big trend, and all we want to do is stay in that trend. Okay, now here's something that I do. I will go into a position like this, and I might take, let's say, a 3% option trade. 3% of my account goes into this option trade and I pick up a, a long option and an option that might be and you can choose to do this with stock it doesn't matter but an option that is usually when I'm thinking long term I'm looking at a weekly chart I usually start with options that are at least 90 days to expiration okay that would be my short short options and I would look at those going all the way up to a year plus Okay, out. Now you can ask everybody in Rightway Options if I actually do this at time to time, and they'll tell you, yeah. We did this in Microsoft. We took a trade and made a 99% return on it and held that for the better part of a year on Microsoft. Made a 99% return. We didn't have to fuss with it much, much. We didn't have to worry about it all that much. We just let the trade continue to work. Okay. But what I'll do is I'll enter a trade like this. 
And if the trade starts working out and it starts working up, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take some of the profit. Because I don't know if it's going to continue going on in the right direction. Meaning that I have to do my good technical analysis. I can't just randomly throw money at a chart. I have to enter at the right place. And if the stock moves up for me like I want it to early on in the trade, I'm going to take some of the profits. Okay. So if it's a stock trade or if it's an option trade, if I have two, three, four contracts, whatever it is that you can do with your trade, I'm going to take some of those profits off. I'm going to scale out a little bit, put some money in my account, and now I can relax a little bit about the position and just manage the stop loss. Okay, I've probably reduced my position if I'm in a 3% trade, maybe re reduce my position to one or two percent of my account that frees up more money if i'm fine looking for or trying to find another long-term position and then i just let these trades i relax and let these trades work for that move up now if you're in a stock trade thinking of a stock trade you're probably going to have to trade larger depending on the size of your account larger than three percent of your account to make that work on some of these trades but it works exactly the same way scale out of the trade all right now if i'm trading options on something like this just like we did how many here remember the trade the fig leaf trade that we did in in microsoft that's here from right way we sold call options against that trade. We brought more money to the trade because we were selling call options on the position. As the stock was moving up, it would find resting points. We would sell call options to collect additional premium. Okay, if you own the stock, it's a perfect opportunity to utilize covered calls and bring more money into the trade while the stock rests, consolidates, and does what it's going to do for that trading. Okay, so these charts are around us all the time. And when the market corrects like this, I get kind of excited because I like to start looking for those little bit longer term trades. I never know which one is gonna be the one that just takes off and goes. Okay, you'll go through a bunch of them before you find one of them that just runs like that. But you will find them if you trade like this. Carrying three to five trades with the idea of more of a position trade. Okay, now you can start these positions by looking for those good quality stocks have been overly beat up in a daily chart. Daily rounded bottom breakouts are how a lot of my long-term trades start. If we take a look at Walmart here with the moving averages and look at my entry down here, you guys can see at one point this was a weekly rounded bottom breakout that occurred right in here. This was the rounded bottom breakout that occurred right here. So the weekly pattern works just as well as the longer term pattern. So what we have to do is we have to search back and see if we can find those longer term trade setups to give us the opportunity to enter those trades. Okay. Yes, you can sell puts against the trade as well. That's right. But it gives me that opportunity. Now, let me ask you guys this question, particularly in this market where it's so crummy like this and it's fluctuating like crazy. I mean, um, from yesterday's low to this morning's gap up is almost 900 points. Today, we had a, a range in the market of over 500 points between high and low. When the market's that crazy, wouldn't it be nice to have a few trades in your account that have really solid profits in them?
you guys know how nice it is to have a position that I picked up in here at about 72, 73, something like that in the trade? And that stock is right up here around 93 right now. See, that adds a nice cushion to your position, right? And this by far is not a great looking stock right here. And by the way, if it's a stock trade, you get to collect the commission or you get to collect the dividend as well. Okay. Uh, DR, uh, the round of bottom breakout is a pattern that we trade all the time. Um, if you don't know that pattern, tonight's not about teaching you that pattern so much as, you know, just displaying the ideas here in, in trading. But essentially, it's a stock that's been oversold, okay? And those, uh, and the price is starting to move back up. The moving averages are starting to round back higher, okay? So, you know, just like right in here oversold stock starts to come up and all of these moving averages in here this is a weekly remember all of these moving averages start to turn and round themselves higher okay that's a stock that is in that round of bottom breakout pattern and there's lots of those right now lots of those i just showed you on the daily chart if we go to a daily chart and look at LVS, LVS is a rounded bottom breakout pattern. Been in a long-term downtrend. Starting to build this bottoming price action in here. And I'm all I'm trying to do is look to catch this trade to move it up here toward that 200-day moving average. No heroic efforts here, nothing fancy, nothing big. Okay, and there's lots of these charts right now. Um, take a look at like, um, and, and all different price ranges too. Um, CYH on a weekly. CYH on that weekly chart. Anybody see the potential of a weekly rounded bottom breakout pattern here? Breaking above that 50-day moving average, here's this big, long downtrend in the stock that we have breached to the upside. Now we're pulling back, looking to find some support, hopefully right across this level of support or above it. And I would be watching for an entry into that trade to start carrying us higher in that move. Right? Excellent opportunity to maybe catch one of those um, nice little stocks coming up out of that trend, okay? Out of that pattern. And it gives us great opportunities here when we start seeing those patterns, but you gotta look for them, right? They don't just come to you immediately, you gotta look for them. How about um, SKT, whoops. can't type jeez how about skt now this is a real estate investment trust but do you guys see the round and bottom breakout pattern here this is a weekly pretty nice pattern right this stock has been oversold. It's trying to correct itself and move higher. And all we're looking for is that slow transition back up toward this level. Okay, just up here, a reversion to the mean coming back. Now, let me let me go to a naked chart here for a second. And let me um, let me display that reversion to the, to the mean, what I'm talking about here. You guys have used Fibonacci tools and things like that. And we're just looking for retracements, right? The market's just a whole series of um, uh, trying to find the prices and seek out those correct levels in the market. So when we sell off big like that, do you guys think that there would be a possibility that this could move back toward these retracement areas in the chart. 
And if you looked, if, if you saw that 200 day moving average, that 200 day moving average was right in here. That's just a 50% retracement of the sell-off. And I'm not trying to get the whole thing. I'm not trying to predict a bottom here, am I? The bottom is already starting to show itself. We've gone through a bottoming pattern, a bottoming process. So I'm not trying to predict the bottom. I just want this piece between there and there. And that could take couple of months to do easily for that to rally up maybe more okay so having a few trades like this on can really help you identify or, or pick up some really nice profits where it doesn't require a whole lot of a time and attention Okay, we're just letting that trade work for us. We're going to use a small amount of money and we're going to let that work for us. Here's a real cheapie. And, you know, you might want to avoid this just because it is such a cheapie. But take a look at NAT here. Massive downtrend. Nice, beautiful W bottom pattern here, forming that bottom. Breaking above that area. If we turn on the moving averages, we have a a rounded bottom breakout pattern forming here on NAT and I would only be looking to try and capture a reversion back to the middle of that that rally back up now trying to be a hero here <clears throat> okay and we all know the way the market has been trading there's been a ton of these now let me show you some examples of stocks that have actually completed some of those things. Let's go to like Clorox here. And I'm going to go to um, a weekly here on Clorox. Excuse me, I wanted to go to a daily on Clorox. So you guys can see here that this was a massive downtrend that lasted for, oh, Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, almost six months before we started to correct. Notice that the bottom is just like we were looking for, that bottom that starts showing those higher lows, starting to show that trend. We break above the 50-day moving average. We pull back. We tested a support. Buyers step in there, and there's that rounded bottom breakout move. And it's just recovering about 50% of the overall downtrend. Now this happened to consolidate out and continue moving on up that could have made that trade even more profitable on the way up. Now let me show you this time period. I'm going to mark this right in here where we might have tried to purchase this trade. And let's take a look at this on a weekly chart. I'm going to go to the naked and I'm going to put the volatility stop back on here. Okay. Does anyone see an opportunity here in this chart? Had you gone to the weekly here and picked up a trade? Here's the same pattern we show all the time, right? There's that downtrend break. We rally up, we pull back. Oh, I'm sorry, that's still a daily. Let's go to the weekly. There we go. And there's our little arrow. There we go. There's our downtrend break in that long-term trend. And you can see how this transition from a daily rounded bottom breakout pattern into a weekly position trade. So you can start a trade on that daily chart if you have the planning in place and allow that to continue to work for you for that longer term trade. Okay, it's the same patterns, right? It's what we show all the time. It's the same thing that we want to look at. So there's, and there's tons of examples of that. Take a look at, um, I'm going to go back over here. Take a look at WB. 
Okay, WB, this nice long trend that occurred here. If we take that to a daily chart, you'll see, yeah, actually it doesn't. Maybe I can't, no, it doesn't show it. I thought I had this one set. I must have wrote this down for something else. But there's that nice bottoming pattern that occurred in here. Breaking above that bottoming pattern. Moving through, notice it consolidated right there. That's two weeks, three weeks of little consolidation in, here, in there before that buy pattern comes in. And if you miss that one, it's no problem. There's one right there and there's one right there for an entry into the trade. Okay, just coming out of a bottom, twisting itself up after a nasty bottom out of after nasty trading and opportunities that set themselves up for these really nice potential runs. Okay, how about J and J? Notice that J and J, we gotta go to a daily. J and J started this nice current move with a rounded bottom breakout. There's that massive sell off. Rallied up here on the daily, started to show rounded bottom breakout. We were looking for a reversion to the mean, recovering about half of the downtrend move. There it is. And that shifted if we again mark this area where we might have been looking to enter this trade. It's kind of choppy right in here. Um, maybe over in here, trying to look at this. If we take that to the weekly, how that downtrend and that daily rounded bottom breakout pattern turned into a nice long uptrend in the chart. No, not necessarily. You guys know that I've been doing a lot of stuff with a 34 EMA. So you can use, you know, you can use a 34 EMA pattern just as easily. Okay. If if I go to uh, this chart here, that's a daily, we can see the transition here. There's a 34 exponential moving average is the orange. The eight exponential moving average is the green, excuse me, is the three, and the eight is uh, the, the pink. <clears throat> and we can see when this root changes itself from short term to long, we get above the 34 and we start to trend. We fall below the 34 and we trend lower. So you could certainly use the 34 for that whole rounded bottom type pattern. It's the same kind of thing. We're looking for those moving averages to turn and shift themselves to the upside. If we look at this on a weekly, you can see the same patterns are there. Not that hard to see, right? The big moves come, shoot, that's a, just a second, I need to change color on this. You won't see a black. The big moves come when we break those long downtrends, break above the 34 moving average, come back, we test a support, and there's your move. And that's several months in the trade. Okay. So you can use other moving averages. It doesn't have to be... Um, you know, the 50 day moving average. Remember, we're just looking for that trend that we want to follow in the position. Okay. We don't have to get overly fancy with this. We just want to follow the overall trend in the chart. Now I can show you one if I go, let's see if I can go back far enough. I need to go to this drawing board. There we go. On this drawing board, here was an actual entry into this trade. I'll have to go a little bit further back to show you why I entered that. There's one of those really long term consolidating areas. Remember how I showed you Disney? 
that really long multi-year consolidating move with rising lows at the last part there that's going on right now in Disney. All I did was wait for the break, okay? And notice when you get big breakouts like that, this trade, I want you to notice on a weekly chart, there was not one black candle in this move for almost three months. Not one black candle. Not one week that was down. So do you guys understand why I'm watching Disney like I am? There's that long multi-year resistance with rising lows in that pattern. The potential for a big breakout eventually and a possible run. Now, what if it doesn't? What if it fails down here? Well, we could have a big run down. Okay. This pattern, though, because of the rising lows, suggesting pressure to the upside. So all I have to do is wait. For the trade, it's the same patterns. It's the same way we trade everything else. Nothing has changed. I'm just looking for the big trade. I don't have to trade a great big position on this. I can trade a rather small position and just take in that big, nice move that can happen out of those trades. And, you know, guys, this isn't odd. There, this stock was a lot more um, volatile. But there was an entry into BDX. Again, a big, long, consolidating period with the really, with rising lows all through there. And when this broke out of here, look at the resulting move on BDX. Uh, Nini, no, I don't. As a matter of fact, a lot of times I don't even look at longer term holds like this after they have a nice profit in them. Sometimes I, I only look at them a couple times a week. You don't have to because you've already got a profit built in. You're after the long term move. Just let the trade work. Don't micromanage these trades. You'll never make these work if you micromanage them. You'll stop yourself out. You'll get if you, in fact, if you start managing this and you jump over to a daily chart, you're going to get all screwed up and you'll get out of that trade before it ever has a chance to really make you some money. You have to allow the trades to work. So right now with this big market correction that's going on, we have charts, we have stocks that have made these big moves down, right? Like Facebook. There's that big downtrend. Oops, let's go to the daily here. Turn my drawings on. There's that big downtrend and notice what's happening right now. Now, this hasn't turned into a rounded bottom breakout just yet because we're still below that 50-day moving average here. But notice that long-term downtrend has currently been broken. And notice the last two lows, we've started an uptrend. Now, do I know if that's going to carry on through? And, you know, what I'd even expect is this bottom may take a little bit more time. It's got to get through the 50-day moving average, right? But if it does, and all of it, and, and if it only comes back about half of this downtrend, is anybody going to have a problem with the profit in that trade if that's what occurs? 
only reverts about halfway back up. in the position. Okay. And if you have a problem with that micromanaging, Kevin, or something, um, Nini, what you might want to consider doing is change this, okay? Change your candlesticks after you've entered the trade. Change it to a hike and ashy candle and manage it here because you can see when we start these nice uptrends it removes all the gaps it removes all the emotion from the trade and you can see a very clear easy pattern in the trade so here again we have this stock that's been downtrending and now all of a sudden we're starting to make these higher moves if it can break above this downtrend hold it in here and then start moving up all i'm looking for is that reversion back to the mean back up in here that hike and ashy candle smooths that process out cleans up that trend so it can work now let's take a look at this on a chart that's working right now okay let's look at merck Okay, if we take a look at Merck, and I'm showing you on the Heiken Ashy candle. Okay, let's take a look at Merck. And did Merck do exactly the same thing that I'm talking about? As a matter of fact, if we go over here to the T line on the daily and pull this back, the stock was oversold in here. Did this ugly, nasty, long term W bottom pattern ugly as ugly as all get out but notice what happened here it broke the downtrend it held as support and we started to make those higher moves okay same pattern over and over and over and you can see on here with the hike and ashy candle see how that smooths that out Take an entry into here on that daily chart sometime in July, and you could still easily be in that trade. Clear over here. Months into that trade. And that's on a daily chart. Months into that trade. And it all set up from this big consolidating move after this ugly, ugly downtrend in the stock. And then everything started to correct. The volatility that was over here dropped out and we had a smoother transition back to the upside. Okay. Um, the longer term, I mean, the longer term trends have broken a long time ago on the daily chart. A lot of these stocks have now made their corrections or maybe pretty close to the bottoms. You know, I just showed you that in Facebook. Facebook's made its correction. It broke its, its uptrend a long time ago, months ago. Now it's starting to transition from that long-term downtrend to a possible uptrend. Okay, how about EA? Massive long-term downtrend. Okay, starting to show signs of stabilizing here at the bottom. I don't know if it's gonna stabilize. I don't know if it's done. I'm not gonna try and predict that it's done but if we look at that chart okay we have that nice downtrend in here that we're looking to break and I don't you could draw this the longer term here you could draw the shorter term right like this the shorter term has broken it broke held the trend and is now trying to move itself back up
This is still below its 50 day moving average. This isn't ready to go yet by any shape of the, uh, 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 of the imagination, but there's that long-term downtrend maybe in the process of bottoming. Yeah, it's finding that base to rest on. All stocks that correct like this go through that same process. Uh, Joe, yeah, if you're going to do any position trading, you have to get comfortable with holding over earnings. Okay. Um, everyone that was in the Microsoft Leap trade saw that we held over earnings. Okay. But we did things to mitigate that using options. Okay to mitigate the risk of that. But here's the thing, Joe, if you have a really nice, comfortable profit in the trade, are you as worried in the, in the stock at long term as trending? Are you as uncomfortable about that trade if it has an earnings event that moves against you? Right, okay. So the trick is to get, in, get into those trades and get a profit working into that trade before you're really confronted with a major earnings event on it. Awesome, Nini. Awesome. So when we look at these trends like this, we want to think, and right now I know everyone is just thinking, oh, the, the market is just crap. Everything is terrible. All these things. Uh, honestly, you really should be getting into the mode of starting to feel a little bit excited about the opportunities of these great stocks that could be trying to find bottoms right now and possibly transitioning into nice little uptrend moves. Okay, EA is not there yet. All right, but there's lots of them like that. WDC, massive long downtrend. Are we bottoming here? I don't know. Bouncing around in here on this bottom stupid thing changed my tool on me but you can see my point we're bouncing around in here could we be bottoming right in here we'll have to wait and see but that's the way the construction of every bottom happens okay we break out of this downtrend hold it as support and now we have an opportunity to have this revert back to the mean come back to the middle of the range. If it goes further than that, off, awesome, but that's not what I'm after. I'm after that, that nice, simple trade. Okay, how about um, Baidu? Baidu, long downtrend. Okay. I don't know if we're going to bottom here. Obviously, uh, the trade war situation could cause us a problem here. If they get some kind of a, an agreement with China, possibly these Chinese um, issues will, will start to pick up. I don't know when it's going to happen, but there's that perfect setup, that long term. It's just been hated for quite a while here. If that starts to come back around, we have a great opportunity here for that longer term trade. All right, talked about Facebook. How about JD? JD is another one of those. Right now, trying to create a higher low here in the chart. I've shown you LVS. How about Win? Win casinos. Long term downtrend. Notice we have rising lows through here. Stupid thing. Just hate that. The way that thing will change colors and just automatically just 
does whatever it wants to do. I have to change it back. So there's that nice long term um, transition coming after this big long term downtrend. And we're trying to get up through that downtrend, trying to establish some base here in the trade for a position. Okay, and we have time to wait on these, right? I know there are some folks trading AMAT right now or have been watching AMAT here recently for that rounded bottom breakout type pattern that could occur in here. There's that long-term downtrend. Notice the last three lows in here trying to set a trend. Let that bottoming pattern happen. Let it move up through this resistance. Let it prove it can hold it as support. And then we have that opportunity to move up here and revert back to the mean. Okay. This making some sense to you guys? How we can actually put together some really good potential trades and make some serious cash using a small portion of our account if we just back away from so much micromanagement. And let those trades work. Okay. Other stuff like we we know oil has just been horribly beat up. OIH. Not even close to being ready for a move back up. But you and I both know they're going to figure out a way to move oil back higher. They always do. Okay, it never stays down forever. And so we just have to wait for that to return. Okay. Now we can find these trades in a lot of different ways. It's, it's not all that difficult to find them. Um, let me show you a couple things here um, with TC2000. You guys know that if any of you are brand new here, never been with us, I use TC2000. I think it's the best charting software out there by far, hands down. If you guys want a link after you see how I use this to find trades, just let me know. I'll give you a link where you can get a discount on it. Um, so let's say i want to search something simple i want to search um maybe i want the um eight exponential moving average okay like on this chart that eight exponential moving average crossing up i want to see that 34 exponential starting to rise or maybe you want to do it with the 50-day moving average I don't know. That may be what you're looking for. You know, so we could do it on any, you know, on anything that we wanted to do here to try and find those good potential trades. So I'm going to go to this chart that has those moving average on it. And I'm going to show you how quickly and easily you can do this. I'm just going to go to, um, let's say we want um, the 20, the 20 exponential moving average above the 50 day okay that means that the that means that that 20 has to be above the 50 day moving average it has to be moving up right it, the only way the 20 can come above is if there is some kind of trend going on here the 20 day is this kind of yellowy light moving average there we want it to be moving above the 50 if we look at any charts that have trended up if we look at um, um, Merck for example 20 day moving average crossing above the 50 day gives us that signal when we come out of this bottom here and we start the possible potential of a move up right 
MKC, you're going to see exactly the same thing. 20 crossing back above that 50 day moving average completes that big long downtrend. And then we start going the other direction. Okay, so we we've proved that that can help us find stocks. Now let's see if there's any doing it right now. So if I were to just search for um, 20 cross or 20 above the 50 day moving average, it's going to give me stocks that are already trying to trend. If I look for the 20 exponential or the 20 simple moving average crossing up the 50 day moving average, just crossing through, it's going to show me stocks maybe coming out of a bottom. I don't know what we'll find. I haven't run this scan. Okay. With TC2000, this is really, really easy. I'm just going to take the 20 um, moving average here and I'm going to come click on the 20 day moving average, say create a scan condition. Okay. And I'm going to move pretty fast on this, but um, we're looking for that 20. Right now, let's just run this against being above the 50 day moving average. Okay. That's all we're looking for. Stocks where the 20 is above the 50 day moving average. Okay. And I'm just going to run this as a scan right now. And I'm running this against all US common stocks. Okay. And you can see every single one of these charts will have the 20 above the 50. They may not be a good chart, but every single one of these charts will be the, be the 20 above the 50. So now we have to refine this just a little bit more, right? We can't, we're not going to just trade any junky old stock or anything like that. We need a little bit of uh, a, a way to sort this into something that's trending. Now, I'm not going to show you how to build this, but I'm going to show you that I use a column set that I've already created. There's nothing fancy about it. I'll, if you guys go watch my videos on YouTube, I show you how to build this with TC2000. And then I'm just going to sort this list really quickly. So this is the same list. I just put it on here for a sort. And now I start looking at those charts that are trending. Anybody like EXR here? It's doing everything we want to see in a chart, right? We move up, pull back, find support. We start a trend. We move up, we pull back, we find support. We advance that trend. We move up, we pull back, and we're setting up that place where we might catch this next move higher. All trends start the same way. Okay. And we can quickly get to these trades just like that. I mean, it's not hard to find trades that are moving up or maybe coming back around. 20 above the 50. That's a simple one. You could do eight above the 34. You could do 13 above the 30. It doesn't matter as long as there's a comparison between the two. What we're looking for is stocks that are starting to show trend. That's it. Okay. Now, if we want to catch those maybe coming up out of the bottom, I'm not going to use the 20 for that. And the, the only reason I'm not going to use the 20 is because so much has been trending down. We probably haven't had enough up move in the market to bring the 20 up through a lot of the 50. So I'm going to use the eight crossing up through the 50. Can we find stocks where the eight exponential moving average is crossing up through the 50 day moving average? Or we could use the 34. It doesn't matter. And we're looking for those stocks starting to show a little bit of change coming up out of a bottom. Let's use the eight and the 34 just to do something different. So I'm going to take this eight. I'm going to go create a condition right here. I want the eight to be crossing up the 34 exponential moving average, crossing up. Okay, and I'm just going to run that as a scan. I'm scanning this against all U.S. stocks. Okay, eight crossing above the 34. That's ugly stock. Eight crossing above the 34 rounded bottom breakout pattern. And by the way, there's no screen in here on this for volume or anything yet. We could screen this down more if we put a limiter on volume, right? 
Let's add my columns to this list. And then sort by those that are showing actual 34 exponential moving average trend. And you can see we don't have any of them yet. So because the market has been so down, that eight may be crossing up through that 34, but they have not established trends yet. With the 34 exponential, there just hasn't been enough time. Okay, but we're getting that eight crossing up through the 30 or through that 34, and we're starting to pick up stocks that may have potential of turning back around. Building that base, you can see in this chart, inverted head and shoulders possibly forming in that chart. Okay, so pretty simple ways of finding them. What if we looked for, let's say we're only looking for a specific index. We want to look at the SPY, SPY, and we just want to find stocks of the SPY where price is above the 50-day moving average, or the price is crossing up through the 50-day moving average. We can search that too. Or we're looking for the 8 above the 50-day moving average or the 8 above the 34 exponential moving average starting to cross up just on those in the SPY. Well, all I have to do is go to the SPY. I click one icon and bring up everything that's in the SPY. Okay, and now all I want to do is I want the 8 crossing up to 34. So I'm just going to create a condition here just like I did. There's my condition. I want the 8 to be greater than the 34, crossing up the exponential 34. And instead of hit scan, I'm going to say add to, and I'm going to add it to this list, and I'm going to sort that list by that criteria. Okay. Here again, S&P 500, we have nothing right now where the eight is crossing up through the 34. N none of the S&P 500 is showing that. Okay. So we're still in that bottoming process. But you can see how easily you can find and sort trades. Now we could do something else here. I'm just gonna replace this with my column set again. And I can quickly find stocks that have somewhat of a trend. See, these have the eight already above the 34. They're already trending. They're not crossing up right now. But we do have stocks in the S&P 500 that are trending. Anybody like Clorox right here? <clears throat> Clorox is a freakishly beautiful setup right now. Uh, Bob A, yeah, um, I don't have a pop out of the box scan, <clears throat> um, but Ed does. If you ask Ed Carter tomorrow, he'll be able to give you that pop out of the box scan that he has. I don't, I don't have it, and the reason is, is because I work from a watch list like this, so all I do is sort watch lists. And when I'm looking at a watch list like this, I'll just run through it. I can find the pattern easy, easy with my eyes, just flipping down through a chart, through the list. Okay, it's not that hard to find um, those nice little tight consolidations. Okay, um, as a matter of fact, um, like Fox and Fox A. I pointed that out in this morning's bit video just by flipping through charts and there's that nice little tight consolidation pop out of the box pattern. Okay. Now keep in mind Fox and Fox A, they're in a buyout situation with Disney. 
okay so this consolidation may be nothing more as that's going to be the buyout number and it go, doesn't go any anywhere from there okay but there's lots of chart patterns like that setting up so easy to get to what you want to get to and find those trades that could potentially be turning into something and changing and trading now I want to switch gears here okay just really really quickly I want to switch gears and I want to go to shorter term trading okay this isn't to just blow your mind or anything like that but you guys saw me post a lot of charts this afternoon that I was doing the same kind of sorts but I was just looking for hourly charts and I want to give you an example of the same patterns, the same thing. Does anybody like CGC here? Not exactly a beautiful chart, right? It's been downtrending, running up towards resistance, nothing there that you'd like as, as a swing trader. Okay. I'm gonna change this chart. I'm gonna to go to an hourly. And do you guys remember this afternoon when I posted an hourly setup here on CGC? There's that pop out of the box pattern. There's our trend doing everything we wanted to do. And I told everyone I bought that position. Right? Who remembers me posting that in the room today? I bought the position. I want you guys to notice it's the same pattern. It's the same thing, right? We look for those downtrending moves. We look for the break of that downtrend. We look for the stock to hold above that downtrend and show buyers coming in. So at the end of the day on this trade, this was an option trade, that stock closed up 9% in that period of time. Have a 9% gain going into the close today on CGC. So the reason I'm showing you this is not to necessarily encourage day trading, but to show you that the patterns are the same. If you learn these patterns, if you study the price action, you can take any chart and break it down for trades. I also mentioned diamonds, okay? I mentioned diamonds and I mentioned it on a 15 minute. There was the 15 minute move right there. Works on any time frame. Break of the downtrend, starts holding above and we start moving up. Worked right over here. Break of the downtrend, moves up and notice I want you to take note of this reversion to the mean what did this do this rallied back to about 50 percent of its pullback this move here moved down rallied back to about 50 percent of that pullback Reversion to the mean. It's just coming back up, testing resistance on those, those points. So it works even on a 15-minute chart. The patterns are the same. Okay? I've told all of you guys that I made really good money on Coca-Cola here recently. Okay? Coca-Cola hourly chart right over here. Okay, Coca-Cola been trending, moving up. We went through this nasty little pullback in here. We started to move up. I didn't actually get into this position until over here. And it wouldn't have mattered if I got in here, or got in here, or got in here. It's the same pattern. There's our trend. On that hourly chart, in this move, between about here and up here, when I got out of the trade, I made 84% using options. I'm using the exact same pattern
and it's repeating over and over and over and over. If I use the moving averages, take the moving averages and take that to an hourly chart, I want you to see it's the exact same patterns. The patterns give us those potential entry points. You making some money on CDC or CGC with me? Nice. So all I do is I look for these patterns and it doesn't matter the time frame. Okay, doesn't matter the time frame. Um, I will tell you on CGC, if I get a pop tomorrow on CGC, CGC, I'll probably take half of the trade off. I'll take profit on it tomorrow. If I get that pop up tomorrow. Okay. I mean, seriously, who doesn't like, I'm right, I'm up 9% right now. Tomorrow morning, can anyone see I could be up 10%, 12%, 15% on the trade tomorrow morning? Where else are you going to go to be able to make a 15% return overnight? And I'm not going to be greedy about that. I took that trade as a short-term trade on an hourly chart. I will take the profits. <laughs> Vegas if you're lucky, right? <laughs> Show me any place that you can go and get a, a, a percent return like that in just a, f a few hours, really, of hold. Now, I have to hold this one overnight, but a few hours of hold. So I'm going to be taking profits. I guarantee you. I'm not going to try to maximize that. I'm not going to try to squeeze every single penny out of it. I'm going to sell a good portion of that position, put that money in my account. If I leave a little piece on, I'll just trail that up and let that move and try to make more out of that trade. But I put that trade on with the whole idea that this was a short-term entry into the position. Okay. And that's all we have to do. Okay, be really focused on that price action. Look at those good price patterns. So, you can take, I, I'm showing you the proof that it works on short term, it works on medium term, it works on long term. Okay, so dig into that price action and those patterns because all the information you need is right there if you allow the trade to come to you, not predict it, wait for the trade. Wait for the trade. Uh, Bob H., no, I don't use an actual, most of the time, unless it's a really fast-moving stock, I don't actually use a trailing stop. I just, if I'm trading an hourly, every hour I'm going to look over there, find out where it is, and adjust the stop. Until I've reached a nice profit point, and I just want to take, take the take it out. Now, for example, if I get into a stock that just moves really fast, Okay, like I wake up in the morning and the thing is gapped up and it's still running up. Well, I don't have time to watch those. So that's when I'll put on a trailing stop and just let the stop take me out. Because after I put the trailing stop in, I'm pretty much done looking at it. I don't have time to watch it wiggle around. So I'll just put a trailing stop in and let it take me out. I don't know how high it'll go and I don't really care. I'm just locking in my profit. Okay. All right, guys. Well, I went a little bit over, well, heck, I've gone almost an hour and a half. Hopefully, you guys got something out of this tonight. So hopefully, you got um, a sense of how you can take advantage of this down move, this, this wild volatility that's going on. You know, keep your hands in your pockets unless you're a quick trader and can do some, do some intraday trading. Keep your hands in your pockets because it's just ripping people's accounts apart if you're trying to swing trade it. 
All right. And I know it feels like the world's coming to an end, but trust me, it's not. I've been doing this for 29 years now. I've lived through a whole bunch of these. And when it's over, there's great money to be made as long as you haven't beat yourself to death and given all your money back to the market trying to overtrade it when it's junky. Right? Protect your capital. We don't have to fight this market when it's junky like this. Wait for the trades. And be excited about the fact that all of this selling, all of this selling is making good stocks get better and better valued for us. This is when Warren Buffett is having his heyday. He's been waiting for this for a long time. He's a value buyer. He wants that massive sell-off. That's where he gets his pick of the best stocks. And it's the best time to enter them. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for being here tonight. I truly, truly appreciate it. Glad you got something out of it. Um, did, does anyone want that or need that? Um, I told everybody I would give you that link to TC2000 to get that discount on it if if you need it, if you want it. And the only reason I they, they gave me a discount because I was teaching a class on TC2000. So um, it's no big deal if you don't want. Oh, you okay. There's a few that want it. Let me give that to you. Um, what it does is it saves you 25 bucks on getting the software. So what that means is, is is if you buy the gold package, it costs you 274 bucks for a year. And I think you can see that TC2000 gets me to the trades quick. So 274 bucks for the gold version for a year, and that's all you really need. Um, um, you can see one trade can pay for the software easily. One trade can pay for the software without a problem. OK, so kind of keep that in mind. Um, take a look at that if it's going to be helpful to you. By the way, go to my YouTube channel. Is there anyone here that's not subscribed to my YouTube channel or has never been to my YouTube channel? This video, as a matter of fact, will be over on the YouTube channel in a day or two. Here it is. If you go over there and click the subscribe button on YouTube. I truly appreciate that because on that sub, um, on that channel, every morning you can access my free morning video. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything, okay? And there's tons of training on that channel. No charge for any of that stuff. So if you guys would go over there and, and subscribe to my channel and make sure you click that bell icon after you hit the subscribe, click that bell icon. That makes sure you'll be notified. Okay. And the morning market prep video comes out every morning before the market opens. And I think if you, um, if folks that watch it right now, I think a lot of them would say that it's useful to them um, um, on setting up your day. Okay, and that's all free. I do that just because I want to help traders. <clears throat> okay. Awesome, guys. Hey, take care of yourselves. Have a great evening. Thanks for being here to, tonight. I truly appreciate it. Glad you guys got some of this, uh, something out of it. If you have any questions or issues or you're struggling with your trader, uh, struggling with your trading, please get a hold of us and we, if we can help. We'd love to help you um, improve your trading. And, you know, never give up because I can tell you this is a tough journey to be successful in trading, but I'm telling you it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. So if you need some help, dig in, get that help, and we'd love to be there to, to help you um, reach that success. So with that, everyone, take care. We'll see you all bright and early tomorrow morning. Have a great evening.